Being a farmer in Ethiopia is no easy task. Tiny fields are scattered between steep mountains and stony valleys. Unpredictable climatic conditions bring droughts or heavy rains, washing the fertile land away from the earth. To keep on planting one season after the other, farmers need seeds that can grow in difficult conditions, which yield crops farmers can eat or sell. The seeds chosen by farmers carry genetic material which adapts and responds to the environment in which they are grown. The combination of human and natural selection results in a rich and constantly evolving diversity of crop genetic resources. Conserving this process is important for the development of new crop varieties, which farmers here and in other parts of the world may need in the future. Ethiopia is one of the richest storehouses of genetic material for crops such as sorghum, wheat, barley and coffee. It's one of the places where mankind first domesticated these crops for agricultural production. Also, improving the genetic material available to farmers is crucial to increase production and reduce hunger. So it's essential to understand the best way to develop and distribute better seeds to meet farmers' needs. The impact of such changes on the diversity of genetic resources and if it's possible to improve productivity whilst maintaining diversity. Farmers get seeds from their own harvests, from exchanges or in local markets, or sometimes from government extension programs or projects sponsored by non-governmental organizations. In areas where frequent drought leads to crop failures, seeds are also provided through emergency seed relief programs. Each of these outlets provides different kinds of seeds, local traditional varieties, modern varieties developed within the country, and varieties developed in other countries. <laughs> the seeds farmers choose to plant determine how productive they will be and also how much genetic diversity will be maintained in their fields. Ipsa Abrahim is a farmer living in the village of Walenso in the Harage province. Maize is the only crop he can count on, as the drought has burned his wheat and his sorghum. It's almost the rainy season now, and he needs seeds to sow before it's too late. <laughs> One day he receives a visit from a combined mission of aid workers of the Harage Catholic Secretariat and the FAO survey team. It's research, asking farmers what kind of seeds they need. Ipsa's wife also joins the group. Men choose a variety of seeds for their productivity or for the strength of the stocks to fix their houses women for their market value or as food for the family. Farmer's choice also depends on what is available and how much it costs. Different varieties of the same crop have different characteristics. If the long-term variety goes lost, we use the short-term variety to avoid risk in order to have food for the family. The long maturing variety is local, but the short term variety comes from the Ministry of Agriculture. Farmers conserve seeds at home. If they are lost, maybe there will be rain in the neighboring peasant association. So we will ask the government, the NGOs, to bring us such a kind of seeds available, suitable for our environment. So the Ararge Catholic Secretariat came to us and distributed their forms. Based on these studies, they collected the seeds from different farmers' vendors.
It's also essential to understand what drives farmers' choice of local, traditional seeds or modern ones. Performance, price, availability. The answers to these questions differ from place to place, sometimes even from farmer to farmer. The interplay between what farmers want and what they can get determines their choice of seeds to plant and the diversity in their fields. Like Ipsa Abrahim, other farmers are interviewed by members of the study team about the varieties they have chosen to plant. This information is used to develop a measure of diversity for the crops and varieties grown in their plot. Later it will be used to analyse the relationship between the demand and supply of crop varieties and the level of diversity on the farm. <laughs> Emergency seed relief is a major source of seeds in some areas of Ethiopia. Another question addressed in the study is the effect of such programs on farmers' seed systems. In some cases, seeds come from local sources. In others, they are brought in from beyond the local area. In some cases, farmers are allowed to choose the crops and varieties they want. In others, this is decided for them. Okay. Ipsa Abrahim receives emergency seeds from a local NGO working together with local traders to procure supplies. One of the conditions to receive seeds is the agreement to repay the community using part of what is harvested. The farmer's relationship with his own community ensures that he or she respects the agreement. The seeds will form a community bank of locally adapted seeds for farmers facing the same problems in the future. In another example, the Catholic Relief Service and FAO organize the distribution in a different way. Here they are given a number of coupons to buy what they need directly from local traders. This system is built upon existing seed systems in the area and attempts to build up the long-run capacity in the area for seed supply and exchange. <laughs> Last year, Hamed Damti lost his crop, and this year he has received seeds during a distribution in the village. <laughs> Now it's time for the rain to come and he's preparing his land to receive his new seeds. A moment, like every year, full of hope, often not repaid. Maybe in the future, the information collected about his needs and the struggles he faces in obtaining the right seeds will help him. He and his fellow farmers will finally have the chance to make the best of their land by having access to the most suitable seeds. Mm -hmm.